I've taught for, I've lost track now, this is maybe year 14 or 15 that I've taught and most of my career has been in alternative schools working with students who haven't experienced success previously in school. Um, and I've had the lucky experience to work uh, in an alternative school where uh, you know, you have a lot of freedom, but then you bear a lot of responsibility to run things. So um, for n numerous years, I was the curriculum leader at Oasis Alternative School. So I learned all those things you need to learn to run a school. And at the same time, I was the art teacher. Um, so I started running um, in my art class a skateboard project. Uh, and then I started doing that as a separate class. And then I soon realized that that class was really popular. Um, and I would always knew when I started um, at that program, the Arts and Social Change program, I started that uh, to engage youth with um, urban arts and the issues in their lives. So I knew that art was the um, the ve like the vehicle to connect kids to engage in school. So um, so I basically uh, <laughs> then after that it was basically just one day um, school board you know talking to people saying what's your future plans and I said hey can I start a skateboard school that starts at 10:30 in the morning <laughs> and um, I laughed thinking it's just a crazy idea um, but I had seen like you know the engagement that skateboards have for some young people and I knew that the skateboard represented much more than just this thing some kids ride you know to school it me meant um, a whole bunch of potential um, projects and integration into the curriculum to get kids writing about things get kids actually building and marketing things and taking ownership for their own product lines and developing their own companies and then you know like learning all the transferable creative and entrepreneurial skills involved with that. So I just had a feeling it could be a bigger thing. So I uh, pitched uh, to take over this classroom and uh, everyone kind of just gave me the trust of that, I guess, based on my experience of, you know, having re had responsibility in a s small school. And uh, just now I'm just running with it. We're in our third year and we have a high success rate for students who haven't experienced success. You make it sound simple, but for other teachers that may be in a similar position, with the similar challenges and you know student disengagement is widespread how do you convince a school board to take a risk like this? Well, I think part of it is teachers should be really strong community members, right? And everyone, when I leave school, I don't, you know, just stop working. Everyone I talk to, I'm talking about the kinds of opportunities. Everyone I talk to is a potential opportunity, a connection for my students. So I'm really good at that networking level of just bringing people al alongside this. The other thing I found is that when you talk to people, most people have this, uh, didn't necessarily have a great experience of high school. So when you you know you're pitching to people this way of engaging kids, most people are kind of come alongside. Um, I think you know in terms of our school board, we're in a moment where people are realizing that you need to look at um, small innovative programs to engage the kids that the big schools aren't engaging. Um, and I think that's just, there's, um, there is a tradition in the, in the Toronto District School Board, when you go back to the Toronto School Board, of like 40 years of alternative schools. So, um, you know, uh, I think we're in a moment where people recognize that, uh, you know, one size doesn't fit all. What if uh, Craig Morrison gets uh, the best job offer since sliced bread at the national level? What happens to programs like, like these ones that are really dependent upon the leadership and the dedication of the teacher? Well, it's, it started off with that, where I had to build the connections. But right now, we have a strong community of support. We have a second teacher who's joined us, who uh, now knows some of the routines and kind of future directions of what we're doing. Also, we have a strong like, um, network in the community of businesses and people who want us to exist. So what we do a lot of work here is do a lot of, uh, I do a lot of uh, teaching at like workshops and like conferences and things like that to sort of, um, I don't want to expand what we're doing to be a giant school for example, but I want other people to use the idea of what I'm doing here, the ways to engage youth, how to work in the community and do that in their own place with 
whatever they're passionate about. So there doesn't necessarily have to be another skateboard program or more skateboard programs, but there could be a BMX program, or if someone likes is a great chef, maybe they should start a food cart program with some kids, or all those um, auto shops where we're teaching kids to fix motors. Well, we better start pinstriping some cars and do a pimp my ride program. Um, you know, let's do a motorcycle program. Well, let's do. I can, there's a billion things that people are into and feel passionate about. You should find those teachers, give them some resources, and let them run with it. And I'm sure we're gonna like improve the uh, the chances of uh, engaging kids that up to this point we just we've let them fall through the cracks. I actually got kicked out of my old school and I didn't know what I was going to do afterwards so my friend told me about the school and I came and I got an interview with Craig and I had to fill out this like work pretty much book thing and I just have to like do design he doesn't want to look at like the designs or anything he just wants to like look at like your arts not your art skill but like your your style of art and everything so I just had to draw something and like have an interview and then I was in pretty much. So safe to say that a regular school at the time wasn't really working out for you then. Can you describe the experience of what a regular school felt like to you? Uh, yeah, it was, I really don't like the regular school program. I felt like I was being looked down at all the time. Like here, like my voice is heard and it's like, it's not only heard, but it's like I'm on the same like level as my teacher and everything. Like, and at my old schools, like I wasn't like that at all. Like I couldn't talk to my teachers about like the problems that I had. So like I couldn't, I didn't feel comfortable talking to them about like if I didn't understand something. Like I felt stupid at another school, and now I'm a really, really good student. Like at my old school, I had a really, really low average, and now here I have over a 90 average. So it just proves that like this is, I don't know. I really like the learning, how we learn and stuff here, because it's all hands on and like. It's not like all the work that we're doing it like comes back to us like we either get money for it Or it's going out into the real world like it's all something that you really want to do and it's not like It's not like you're getting pushed to do anything you want to do everything that you're doing here I used to not really know what I wanted to do when I'm older and now like I'm like no I like I know what I want to do like this is like my passion like I found like what I love doing at school and like I can't like I hate saying the cliche like I'm happy coming to school, but like I really enjoy coming to school. Like I get excited every morning when I go to school because I'm doing something I love doing, and like now I'm gonna get to do it like in the future and stuff. And I have all the skills to do all that, and I know like people that I can go and work with and stuff after school. Why was it boring to you at the at the time, regular school? Because it's all like work, like paperwork and stuff, and like all the projects that I'm doing, like at my at my old school, they're all fake like fake projects pretty much like they're like bristol boards or a powerpoint and it's like okay i'm prevent presenting this to a classroom that's it so like you know what i mean like i don't really want to try that hard because it's not no one's seeing it it's not do like no one's whatever so like now like if i make a skateboard i'm selling it to a shop and like billions of people are going to see it like i'm going to try so hard to make that board amazing or like my article in concrete wave like I spell check that like billions of times. Why? Because it's going to a magazine, not because it's just going to, I don't know, someone's file. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's because all of my stuff is actually going to the real world. And before at old schools, it wasn't. It was just going in to someone's office and one person was marking it. Like, I don't know. I like it here because even if Craig, like, is like, I don't know, maybe he doesn't really like your design that much, but he always does. But I mean, like, even if one person doesn't like it, you know that someone else is going to like it in the world and someone else is going to get to see it in the world and appreciate it the way that you do. And I don't know, I find that in schools, like, we kind of are, like, taught to, like, all think, like, the exact same way and, like, do the exact same thing. And, like, here you, you're kind of pushed to do something different. Like, all the projects, another thing is, like, all the projects that we do, it's mostly, like, our creative mind, like, that gets to, like, think of what we do. Like, he'll be like, hey, like, for Bamboo Skate, like, we got boards, and we had to design, like, them in, like, a sustainability design. But they weren't like, hey, put a panda on it, and you have to draw a panda with, like, stippling. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you get to think of your own design for it, so it makes it sound, like, kind of your own, but it's also someone else's. So it's, like, working on a professional level, too, in a way. I love the design. Like, uh, I'm actually one of the students that uh, do more design work than actual making skateboards and stuff. Like, I redesigned uh, the school logo, got paid for that. 
Uh, I'm building free ride boards with Craig, but my specialty is, uh, is graffiti. Like I do graffiti art, so I help um, some of the new students do graffiti on their boards, and like just a lot of like uh, letter styles and graphic design like that. Uh, so beyond the art, what else are you learning here at the school? Like. I'm learning like entrepreneur skills, how to expand a business, uh, like the other side of the business, uh, real real life stuff actually. Like schools, they tell you, oh yeah, like you just gotta go to school and then you gotta follow your boss and like get paid. When I come to this school, it's like I learn entrepreneur skills. Like, I can make my own business. I can, and how hard it is to make your own business. It's not like just easy, simple stuff where you just go into it and all of a sudden you have like this humongous business with all this money and stuff. It's like it's actually really hard. Like they tell you that straight up, it's gonna be hard. And you gotta push really hard. You gotta grind and become awesome. You know, it doesn't just come. So I learned that. I had no idea what I wanted to be or what I was gonna do with life. Like I knew I liked art, but I had never had a dream or hopes that I would make it anywhere with art. And then coming here, it's just like, man, there's so much opportunity for art. There's so much I could do with the talent I have at 16 to be able to, like, I, you know, the bait shop. The bait, like the bait shop is like this huge gallery, and like I'm doing a, an actual their name in graffiti on their wall, and I'm 16. To be able to do that, it's like so much exposure and like so much crazy opportunities coming from this school on. So it's really great to get my name out. How does that make you feel to sell your art? Um, amazing. Like before I came to this program, I didn't do anything with my artwork. I was an artist, but I never really did anything about it. And now that I can actually get my artwork out there, I feel so proud. Like I feel like somebody, you know. So you've been in since September. How do you how how has this program changed your life? Um, well, I wasn't doing very good in school before I came here, and after this program, like my grades have skyrocketed, and I've done so much with my artwork that I could actually have a career in it. So it helped me out so much. How would you compare this experience to, well, I guess, for lack of a better term, regular school, your old school? What What's the difference? What makes this? What makes you happy being here versus in, a, in, a, in another school? Um, there's, there's a huge difference. Um, at my old school, like you just you go to school and there's like there's so much like work and like pressure and like I mean it's not fun. Like anyone who can, who can, anyone who can agree, like school is just not fun in general. And like I just didn't want to go to school anymore. And then coming to this school, and I actually look forward to coming to school because I can actually do my artwork. I get to focus like on my brand. I actually get to learn. And it's like I've never really felt that way about school before. And if it wasn't for this program. Program, I don't think I would have really went anywhere like I wasn't even planning on going to college but now that I'm here I'm thinking I'm actually gonna go to an art college you know what's one uh, you can't I don't think every young person could have an experience because there's a limited a, a number of things so what would knowing what you know now what would be one thing you would change about regular high school if you could if you had a magic wand oh man that's it's a tough question um, if I could change one thing, um, I would really want to start putting like alternative programs into schools. You know what I mean? Like I know a lot of schools focus on like math and science, and like that's a strong suit. Like I think they should start bringing out the arts in every single school. It shouldn't be like, oh, if you're good enough, you can go to an art school. Maybe you can get in. No, I think that the arts should be open to everyone. And if you, even if you're not even artistic, like it's something beautiful, and people should just be a part of it just because. How does a teacher go about trying to to do something that you have done? How how what what is the blueprint? Can a blueprint be made? Yo, the, uh, well, I think the blueprint's there. Like uh, as I said, you know, you first of all have to build um, that that kind of network of support for your ideas, right? And that comes from just thinking of your classroom beyond the classroom walls and the narrow confines of the school. Of course, you have to convince your school board to do it. But what you want to do is bring alongside people in your community and people in the professional at the professional level of what you're trying to pitch to be part of what you're doing, right? Um, so they bring a high level of validation to what you're doing, validation the kids are first of all too when they're doing when my students are writing for English class for concrete wave magazine that get re, gets read by a hundred thousand people right um, there's a whole bunch of validation that helps kids buy in but it also lets other adults buy into it to see the legitimacy of what we're doing right um, so you need to bring do do that kind of building of that uh, your advocacy group that way. Um, I think you should be really conscious of the optics of what you're doing and that we live in a media world and you gotta become savvy and making sure that people know about. And I was really clear, every single board we make, there's a picture of that board with a st student and their story of, about that board on our website. And that picture of the, the look in those kids' face and what they say about what they, they've done, and mo most of the stories are about how they've been engaged for the first time, that's what sells it. Because I think it's really, like, I think people want to help these students, they just don't know 
where to start. Now, and like I said again, I think people should take some risks. The youth are worth it, you know, worth it putting these risks in there. Just find the adults that can connect to youth and give them some, you know, space and resources to develop those things that are going to connect to these kids. I think there's a million projects you can run just the same way as I'm doing. A central focus theme, working in the community with a, pract a practical application. We're not doing playing, you know, pretend, you know, we don't do pretend projects here. Every project goes out into the world. You know, I don't even let a kid ride a skateboard till that's been documented or in an art show so other people see what we're doing. Right, so he's also trying to like also use the media and those ways to get the word out, so people kind of can come be part of your kind of group. So in three years, you know, I started this program with a, a gallery who maybe wanted to do a show and a connection to Royal Rocket Skateboard Company, and I have tons of connections in three years of people in the industry that are all my supporters for what we do now. Right, so. I think, you know, it's just about finding the right, you know, teachers and schools who will connect to the community and the right administrators and, you know, resources at the school board level who are willing to trust that to happen. On one hand, they're hearing, like, there's no opportunities out there, right? And the other hand, we're teaching them things that uh, they that no matter what hard work my colleagues in schools do, um, students don't see the relevance to it. Right? They're not. You need to start where the students are at, the things they're passionate about, and make the connections out from there. Um, and um, so, I think a lot of the students are uh, just never saw value in doing school projects. They don't see a reason to show up because they're not getting anything out of it. And here, it's true. I kind of put a kind of a monetary part of what we're doing, which creates a huge amount of validation for these students that they're not doing some kind of. Um, projects so one day they can learn the skills to one day become a designer in the world. They are designers now. They do contracts with clients. They make money now, right? So having that experience, I kind of talk about it as almost being like um, some kind of uh, thrown in the deep ends, right? I throw students into this intense experience, but give them the support they need and the mentors or I bring in community mentors, anyone they need to be successful in that, in that experience. And then we know that success breeds success. Once you give students a successful experience, you can hook them and then you can really go far with that.